As I shared with the confirmation candidates yesterday when we celebrated Mass at the retreat house, I told them that I'm always grateful, not always, maybe most of the time, <laughs> grateful for modern technology. I love modern technology. Sometimes they can be a struggle, but for the most part, I'm not a tech savvy. So for, but for the most part, modern technology is very, very helpful, and we thank God for the gift of modern technology. I say that because when I was moved from St. John the Baptist as pastor to becoming the diocesan vocation director, I did that for two years, I knew that, yes, although while being pastor of St. John's, Bishop was still my superior, but in the parish, I was the immediate superior of everyone. So when I moved to the chancery, I said to myself, now, the bishop is my immediate superior. He basically is my boss. And I know that he'll be calling me from time to time, especially when it comes to the seminarians who will probably ask me how the men are doing, how many candidates we have, and all of that. So I said to myself, I have this cell phone. And I really would like and try my best to respond to the bishop right away. I want to show off, you know. And so I said, ah, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to assign a special ringtone for the bishop. You know you can do that. You can assign a special ringtone for every single person. So I did. But I said to myself, I want to think of a, a unique ringtone. Please don't tell Bishop McGraw this. <laughs> so I assigned Bruno Mars <laughs> as my ringtone for Bishop McGraw. You know, the one that says, easy come, easy go. You know that, <laughs> right? That song. And so when I was listening to the whole song, I said, oh, like the refrain. It's not so good. <laughs> but I said, mm, well, it will catch my attention. I will immediately recognize the ringtone that I could answer right away. So I kept it. I kept my ringtone for Bishop McGraw to the tune of Bruno Mars's Grenade. That's the title of the song. All right? Don't tell him that. So anyway, without that special ringtone, though, there's no way I could recognize who's calling me. Because if you have the ringtone, same ringtones for everyone, you would never know who's calling unless you look at your phone. But with modern technology, as I've, as I've said, assigning different ringtones for people helped me not only recognize the, the tone, but also it allowed me to attend to that person who was calling me. In the gospel reading today, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Today, we listen to the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, where we hear all about the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd who lays down his life for sheep. The Good Shepherd who will care, tend, pasture, feed, support, encourage, if you will. So Jesus uses all of the images of the Good Shepherd. And Jesus 
refers to himself as the good shepherd. And he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. Then Jesus says, they will hear my voice. Not only will they hear my voice, they will recognize my voice. They will recognize my voice. They will hear me and they will follow me, Jesus says. But as we look at the gospel text, when we listen to that statement, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me, I believe that that statement connotes a promise and a challenge. A promise and a challenge. Because Jesus did not just birth, burst, out, burst forth from the tomb. Jesus did not, was not just raised from the tomb to do nothing or to be silent, to be quiet, nor to abandon us. But Jesus made a promise. He said, my sheep will hear my voice. Basically, Jesus is saying that he will speak to all of us. He will speak to all of us. He wants to talk to us because Jesus knows, the good shepherd knows, that you and I are in need of guidance all the time. The good shepherd knows that we worry from time to time and the good shepherd would like to give us some advice. The good shepherd knows that we can go the other way from time to time and so the good shepherd would like to speak to us so that we can go back to the right path. That is why the good shepherd says, my sheep hear my voice and they will follow me. But you and I know that not all the voices that we hear out there are always from the good shepherd. That is why we need to discern carefully and think carefully as to which voice we need to listen to. The season of Easter is not just a season when we are invited to rejoice in the gift of the resurrection. The season of Easter is also a season when we are invited to rejoice for the gift of baptism. Because we, in baptism, have been given the gift of the Spirit. Not the spirit of the sheep, but the spirit of the shepherd. The spirit of the shepherd, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, lives in and through each one of us. And so it is through each one of us, it is through every single one here, that the voice of the good shepherd is heard by others. But again, we ask ourselves, how does that happen? Because the Good Shepherd Spirit lives in us, then we need to emulate, to imitate the voice of the shepherd. That the words that would come out from us should be words of love, words of compassion, words of understanding, words of forgiveness, words of hope, words of encouragement, words of life. That because the Good Shepherd Spirit lives in each one of us, everything we do must be in accordance to the work of the Shepherd. That every single one of us here are invited to be shepherds, parents, 
are invited to be shepherds. Grandparents are invited to be shepherds. Teachers, doctors, nurses, judges, those who are helping us in any way or form, we are invited to be shepherds, caring, loving, tending, feeding one another. Boys and girls, in a very special way today, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is speaking to all of you through your parents. Through your parents, you have heard the Good Shepherd. You continue to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd as they care for you, as they love you, as they understand you, as they forgive you, as they give you advice, and more importantly, as they have allowed you, as they have brought you here in this church to receive for the first time the very body of Jesus, who is the Good Shepherd. Boys and girls, the good news is, today, as we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, just look at mom. Look at mom. And dad, of course. Look at mom today. It's Mother's Day. They are, if you will, the epitome of what a good shepherd what a good shepherd really is. And so we give thanks today for the gift of Jesus, the good shepherd, and for the gift of allowing us to be shepherds to one another so that through us, people will continue to recognize the voice of the shepherd calling everyone into one flock gathered in God's love gathered in God's forgiveness and mercy.